That's great. What's Thanks. the most important pedal on your board? Tuna. Yes. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. <laughs> is the old saying. It's funny because it's true. And you've got a new tuner. <laughs> I do. Everyone's carrying on about these Strobo tuners. I've had a few tuning issues at gigs. Um, mainly because I use vintage early 70s Japanese guitars. Yeah, <laughs> and they don't always stay in tune, but you know, like I'm six foot one. Yeah, and you wrestle the neck. Yeah, I do. You wrestle I mean, the guitar into submission. I've been using the tuner and the HX Stomp, and I don't think it's as quick and as reliable as I need it okay. to be. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so everyone's been getting these Strobo Stomps. They've got a massive screen on them, which is good because I'm old and my eyes aren't what they used to be. This is a Peterson one, so even in daylight, broad daylight, it says, you know, good for, you can set it to view in broad daylight. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, and it's pretty bright in here in the studio, and it, I can see it just fine. I'm looking at it, it looks good. Uh, so we got thinking, Yeah. maybe we should just line them all up and just have a look at them all and see how accurate they all are. And yes. So we've got the four, I think probably the four most popular tuners on the market, the the, especially the Boss, uh, the Polytune, and the and your Korg yeah, Pitch Black. Yeah, Pitch Black. Yeah. yeah. And I've had the Pitch Black on and off boards for a few years now. Um, and I like it because it's bright. Uh, and I'm loving looking at your Peterson Strobo Stomp there because it's just... Well, it's just massive. It's just like, in your face. Yeah. And it's quick. It's super quick. Mm. Mm. Uh, and apparently these strobe tuners are way more accurate than normal tuners. Yeah. Let's... What are we going to do? Are we going to put them against each other and see what they do? Yeah, and well, my guitar sounds like this. I think it's close. It's pretty close. Uh, so I'm just going to tune up. Uh, <laughs> So the polytune says I'm in tune, the boss says I'm in tune, the cork black doesn't, and the It's pretty close. Now everything says I'm in tune. Same, that one's all the same. Oh, a little bit of movement on the peasant. I'll tell you what, they're all they're all pretty much the same. Yeah, they're matching it up. Yeah, all matched up again. They're all pretty much bang on. See there, the polytune. Oh. I think they're all just a little bit slower to catch on to the note because sometimes it's like right now the boss says I was in tune and then it says I'm not. Yeah, and so they'll all react slightly differently to, to you, also to the attack that you give to the string. The string, especially your bass strings, are going to pitch sharp if you give them hell. And if they're, if they're oscillating wildly and you've attacked it really hard, they're going to pitch sharp. Yeah. Uh, and then they're going to come back to where they're going to normally rest in a sustained note. So um, I guess when you're tuning up, you don't want to touch your string too lightly or too hard when, you, when you're tuning up, but hit it with the attack that the string would get on 50 to 60% of the time when you're playing. Um, it's also important to tune from below the note 
a tone, at least a tone below that, and then bring it up. So you've got the tension around the capstan on, on your uh, machine heads, um, rather than tuning from sharp to flat, because if you start to release tension on the string and you tune down from sharp, as soon as you hit that string again, it's going to release some more tension that you've just wound off the, the capstan anyway. So No way. Yeah way. It's serious? Absolutely serious. Yeah, always, always tune from below the note and come up. Like that? Yeah. Are you like serious? That, yeah. So I've been tuning wrong for the last 25 years. Well, whatever works for you. But that's the way to keep the tension on the, on the capstan um, even because as you're tightening it up, you're actually inducing tension, which is going to sit. If you're relaxing it off, I think if you're relaxing off, off a big capstan on a, on a, on a ship's bowline, on yeah. a big rope, you release some off. As soon as you pull some tension on that, you're going to be able to pull some more off that. Yep. Whereas if you start pulling tension on it, you retain that tension as you're, as you're tightening it up. Um, I'm flabbergasted by that because I didn't know that. Wow. Well, <laughs> That's something I've read somewhere. And I wonder I if that's it. why I'm always out of tune. That's something I read somewhere, and it's something that, that, make, that makes sense to me. But you can see with all these tuners, like these are tuners that are used on, on boards around the world, and they're staples of the industry. They're, they're generally rock solid, and we've got the new Peterson Strobo Stomp in play here. Um, and they all came up to snuff. They're all, they are all the same. Like I just played an A, gently, gentle A. Bang. They're all identical, they also the same thing. And I'd say they're a, a little bit more sensitive than what you might find in your multi-effects pedal, which has an incorporated tuner. Maybe, I don't know. It's whether or not it works for you. Sometimes you... The HX Stomp one has not been working for me. You know, because we play gigs together. Yeah. And it's slow, it's so slow, and the screen's so bloody small on it, I can't see it. There you go. So I, I guess what you compromise with your with some multi-effects layouts is just screen size, and it's not bang staring in your face, and you want that in your face. Yeah. Yeah. That is either going to be the best, most informative five minutes of YouTube or the most boring five minutes of YouTube we've ever done. <laughs> Ever. But thanks for the tips, man. I actually really appreciate it. That's all right. And the Strobo Stomp that have bypass or is always on in the background or you can... So it does... Yeah, you can save a heap of different preset tunings in there. You can change the color of the screen. <laughs> you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. And you can actually set it to mute. So if you... Actually, it won't work because we've got split signal paths today. But you can actually... When you hit the button and the... Just hit the button and make the LED come on then it will actually mute the signal. It won't today because we're coming out of the... Sure. Uh, but on my actual live gig board, that actually mutes my signal while I tune. So, yeah. But the screen stays on all the time, which is awesome. Yeah. So, like, like all of these that are on the board here, if you engage the switch, it'll go into mute mode so you can tune silently on stage. Yeah. yeah. So, the Peterson has the option to always let it come through and the Boss has the option to always let it come through. Okay. Um, now the other exciting thing which I think is that the Korg, the Boss and the Peterson all have 9 volts out as well as 9 volts in. Yeah, they do. So you can run an extra pedal where I don't expect it from the Polytune. It's a mini pedal. It's designed to be super small and compact. Mm. Uh, so of course they, they, and just cheap as possible. So of course they don't have a 9 volts there, but the other three do. And I think that's a, that's a really cool feature if you're. Yeah, yeah. You need to daisy chain a, a small overdrive or something that's only you know ten milliamps or something like that. Absolutely, yeah. it's a good feature. Done. Cool. Let's get let's build another board and get out of here. Let's do it. Done. See Bye. you soon. Bye.